Hi, how are you? This is um, Damaris Maria Grossman, Integrative Family Nurse Practitioner, and thank you for joining in on Mindfully Integrative Podcast. Today, we have an amazing guest. She is a celebrity yoga teacher, integrative mom, amazing woman, and I can't wait for you to meet her, Sarah, Pla Sarah Finger, but I call her just an amazing woman. <laughs> so I have so many things to say about her, but I know that she'll tell you more about her story. So thank you so much for joining in on this show. Thank you so much for having me. I, I couldn't imagine not, not inviting you in. Um, <laughs> so tell, uh, the audience a little like fun fact about you, um, that people may not know. Fun fact about me is that I actually lived in Taiwan for three years after I graduated from college. Wow. What what made you kind of go there? That's not something that like someone would choose. Yeah, you know, uh, in in college, I grew an affinity for Asian studies. I was an Asian studies minor. <laughs> Um, and the school that I attended had something called a block system, which is where you study one subject for three and a half weeks, and then you take a five day break. Okay. And I studied um, the meditative arts, Chinese meditative arts, and uh, learned about Tai Chi and calligraphy. This is where I learned a little bit about yoga and meditation. Mm -hmm. And it just completely changed my life. And I felt like I deeply desire to go to that part of the world and explore the culture a little bit more, learn the language, um, and just tap into a totally different culture and way of life than I knew. And it was amazing. That's so neat. Like, um, was there like certain foods that you ate or was there, mm -hmm. was it just like a lot of meditative time or you just, did you do some work there and studied more or? Yeah, well, so at the time <clears throat> I was a performing arts major, so I was a dance major and an Asian studies minor. And so I, my dance teacher advisor, she was Taiwanese and um, she offered me this opportunity to go there to teach children English oh. and to also do some dance and some choreography. So um, I did some teaching there. I did some dancing while I was there. Um, I did pick up more yoga, interestingly, although it was a very different type of yoga than what I teach now. Um, and I learned a lot more of the language. I was only supposed to go for one year, but one turned into two and then two to three. I actually thought for one time that I might make, I might live there. I, I had wow. a romantic interest. Um, I thought that I was going to have a, a family in Taiwan and it, it wasn't to happen that way, but it really did impact my life in a lot of ways. That's, I mean, I, all these different like things that happen in your life, you kind of go, oh, wow, that, you know, but it, 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 it was another part of molding where you are. I mean, you all, are, you also are a co-founder of Ishta Yoga Studio. Um, and we'll, you know, you can go into that at some point. Um, but this podcast talks tons about integrative health and tons about integrative life. And I believe you embody that each and every day. And, but how, um, was there something that kind of came to you? Was it this Taiwanese big, um, trip or things in your life that kind of got you to where you are now or, you know, the story-ish? Yeah. I mean, I think growing up, I, um, definitely, I was a big thinker and seeker, very sensitive struggled a bit um certainly as i got into my teenage and young adult years maybe, um, empath? maybe an empath yeah i think i think i was empathic but i didn't know what to do with my feelings i didn't yeah. have felt things very strongly and i didn't have tools or guidance or a network or anything to understand what to do with my feelings so I, you know, as many people do, try to escape them and numb them and judge them and make them wrong and blame myself and my body and um, was pretty self-destructive in some ways. And so I, that was part of what inspired me to move far away. I felt like I needed to get out of the environment that I was in mm -hmm. and, and change, shake things up a bit. And I just, I've always been very 
in tune and connected to this sort of inner voice inside of me um, that guided me to go to Colorado for college and that guided me to go to Taiwan, even though it was so far away and seemingly such an unusual choice, but I just felt really called to do it. And I really clearly listened to that voice that said, there's something here for you, for you to learn. And um, so I f there was something about the Asian studies, the that Eastern way of thinking of integrating um, your mind and body and spirit that was so motivating for me and comforting for me because I always thought things had to be compartmentalized. 100%, or, right? I totally get you there. Yeah. You that's what it was supposed to be. Exactly. And so it's like your feelings are here, your um, thoughts are here, your actions go there, your job is here. And being able to learn to access different parts of myself um, and and understand a way of life that was more about bringing this thought, this process of reflection and integration and meditation into my everyday life was something that was life changing for me. And when you go to Asia, you know, prayer and rituals and um, community, these are all very much a part of the culture of the everyday way of life. Everything is you see it interconnected. Um, and that felt was comforting for me because I felt a sense of belonging there, even though I was what they call a Y Goren, which means you're an outside person, <laughs> you're a foreigner, but I felt very connected to the culture there. I, I can see what you mean, like the interconnectedness. I mean, uh, you know, your past or your childhood brought you to, you know, the transition. I feel like for my trauma and childhood, I was like, there has to be something different, you know, like I can't mm -hmm. be in this pain. Right. Yeah. Um, and you, you were able to see that in other, this other culture. And then it transitioned into this beautiful yoga journey that you have. And, and yes. I, I know you have, and meditation and mindful. I mean, I know you have plenty um, to discuss, but I, I think you're a beautiful person and I know that you um, bring a lot of guidance um, to others. So I, I would just wanted to know kind of like, you know, where, how that, how that kind of started to unfold from, you know, the Taiwanese trip and such. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's very kind of you to say those words. I really appreciate it. Yeah, uh, in, in Taiwan, I started to do yoga and actually teach yoga because I had a background in dance and gymnastics and the teacher thought I was adept at it. So she would put me in front of the room and I would teach in Mandarin these different poses. Um, then SARS happened, which was uh, you know an epidemic at the time. Uh, and lots of people were getting sick. And I just felt, again, that inner voice, that inner knowing was like, it's time to go home now. It's time to leave and get back to New York. And so I returned back home and I felt this interest in the yoga that I was doing. It had changed my state of mind. It was a physical practice that was different than dance or gymnastics, which was my background, but something, again, more integrated, more bringing in this in this mind uh, approach of connection and awareness and presence that was new for me. So I came back to New York and I sought out uh, somewhere to do my, my yoga teacher training. And um, at the time I was living with my parents back in Long Island and there was a school called Yoga Zone. <clears throat> and I went there and I, I had been to several different yoga classes and couldn't quite find it. At the time, I had reverse culture shock. I didn't really feel quite at home where I was, but of course I knew Taiwan wasn't home for me. So I had all of this adjustment to do, and it was very hard for me because I really did love my life there in Taiwan, but I also was not fully content at the time. And so it wasn't until I took my first Ishta class, um, from my teacher at the time, her name was Mary Jo Marchicello. And 
it was for the first time I felt at home. I felt at home in my body because of the techniques she was sharing and the visualizations she was bringing in and the way that she was guiding us to be in our bodies, you know, in our bodies, but also in a subtle body, right? Your subtle body is also just this part of you that you can't measure. And it just was a language that I completely understood and I felt at home in. And I was like, what is this style of yoga? I need to learn more. And she, you know, I saw the picture of um, Alan, who is now my husband, and felt this like electricity through my body. And I was just like, I need to meet this person. I need to learn more about this yoga. She directed me to Manhattan to the studio at the time. And then, you know, I took all my. And yeah, I did. He was your soulmate. It's like when I met my husband, he was your soulmate. <laughs> yeah, it literally just was magnetism. And I didn't know at the time, of course, when I did my teacher training, that that would be our sort of destiny. But <laughs> I felt so it's sort of like I just was from the moment that my soul was like, all right, time to go home, time to get your teacher training certification. This is what it is. Go find this person. And, um, you know, the doors really sort of open up when you when you don't think too much and you just like, get guided. And, yeah, it comes in and it just like and it's I feel like just from this, I want to pause. It's just like, like, you know, you just bring it in and you're like these doors open when you think a lot are closing, like something is opening. It's like I must be on the right path and you're yes. listening. Right. So it it, it, it is works. a listening. Right. Because we get so accustomed to speaking and talking and, you know, filling the space in, but that ability to just pause and listen is really such a gift. Yeah. And it's where the magic is, I think. I, I, I mean, that's, it makes, you know, a lot of sense, you know, mm -hmm. I, in general, you're, you know, so you started doing the training and you became a teacher, but you're a co-founder of Ishta. And I know the audience doesn't know what you know and now it's online but what ishta means and yeah. um, and how that is um in not just the 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 business of working and you know or or just the poses of yoga yeah it's so much more and when i found you guys um i the studio i was like i felt very at place because you have a different way of thinking with yoga and, and a mindfulness and a, a meditative centering. And, and I'd love for you to explain that even more to the listeners and to those. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, Ishta is, stands for the integrated science of Hatha, Tantra, and Ayurveda. Um, and at the time, I should say, when I did my teacher training, there was, it was in the Ishta school and my, what my husband had shared and taught, but the actual studio was part of um, the yoga works at the time. Oh, okay. And we had the opportunity to break apart. And I just knew that Ishta needed its own home, that there were so many people who had been touched and moved, myself included, by this practice. And we had uh, partnered with another, another couple at the time and opened up a studio on 11th street and called it ishta yoga and that was like our home because ishta was a home for me and my body i knew that i wanted to create a home for other people to come to and feel welcome and just feel completely accepted because even in the yoga world you can feel like maybe you don't belong if you're not you know adept enough if you don't look a certain way if you don't eat a certain way if you don't you know practice a certain way and ishta is really the second meaning of Isha is that which resonates with the individual spirit or uh, another meaning that I love, a translation that I love of the sutra from which Ishta comes from. Svadhyaya Ishta Devata Samprayogaha is in Sanskrit. The translation of that is when you study yourself, you discover the divine. Mm -hmm. So this practice of self-study, Svadhyaya, of looking inward and exploring yourself and in the process, discovering everything right everything that you've always desired everything that you've always searched for recognizing that that abundance and that peace and that wisdom and that power is right there within you 
And that's the power of, of Tantra, which is the T in Ishta. Tantra it comes from two words, Tanoti, which means to expand, and Trayati, to liberate. And it's this practice of accessing that part of ourselves, recognizing this unified field of inspiration and intelligence that is present in all things, all beings, every, actually all of matter, right? Comes from one source. Everything on this plane of existence comes from one unified source of intelligence. And yoga is Sanskrit, it's Brahman, but you, you know, in quantum science, they call it the unified field of energy. Energy, right? Right, so it's energetic field. Call it, yeah, some people might call it God, right? So whatever word it is, there's a source through which all of manifestation and matter comes from. And so when we recognize that, we recognize that we also have the power to return back to that source. So Ishta is really about providing the tools and techniques through asana, the physical practice, visualization, kriya, meditation, uh, mantra, sound, uh, pranayama, breath, all of these different techniques that we have access to, to liberate us, to experience ourselves as that field of intelligence, as that nature. Um, so that's really the, the intention of the Ishta practice. I think that was beautifully spoken. Um, I feel the others knowing that when you start going inward, you know, it has that scary moments or scary things that come up, but being able to look inward and finding that this open space or this, these things that come up. And then you're saying having the techniques and the tools, so many people don't have their toolbox, you know, they don't know what to do and they're lost. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's really, and they really just are that tools, you know, and different people find different tools at different times of their life. But what I love about yoga and meditation are these are tools that are inherent within us, right? It's, yeah. you don't have to go somewhere or Google anything or, you know, become somebody else. You just have to access your physical body, right? It's the technology of the physical body that enables us to make a sound, to hear our breath, to make a shape with our bodies, or to, you know, transcend into this space of consciousness. Um, but it's all inherent within us. And it's a very empowering way to perceive the world and reality. I could not agree more. Um, as a person that had, you know, passed and as everyone has something, if I mm -hmm. didn't find yoga and my breath and then, you know, a different way of thinking, I, I don't think I would have this mindset of, you know, change and wanting to make yeah. a difference. And I think that you really, um, when people understand that, you know, where it can grow for you. And I just, I mean, even, additional to just the yoga path, the fact of where your um, the Ishta way, I, I would say, I don't mean, um, I know you probably, but I just, I do really love how you teach and how your um, studio teaches and the way that it, it resonates. Um, but like you said, it's, it's different for each person, but kind of coming into source, I don't, I mean, maybe some people are afraid to come into source, but when they recognize that I, I think it's a beautiful thing. It can be scary, but it, like you said, it's all around mm -hmm. us. And I, I, you know, totally understand that. Um, yeah. Throughout this time. Um, so you, and you, like you said, you brought people, so many people you've impacted by having this home um, and, you know, and bringing all these people to your, to the studio and you've impacted and, and taught all over the world. And, you know, um, was, is there a teaching time for you or a moment in your uh, life that is kind of, or this, you know, um, that has made a, that kind of like resonates with you recently or past? Um, you mean with like teaching 
in yeah, a yoga teaching or is there someone in the, in your, you know, um, was, I don't know if you have to say, was there a teaching moment that you find, or, you know, that was been, that resonates with you recently or, or past in the past that you're just mm-hmm. kind of been good. Yeah. I mean, really all of the, all of the teaching that everything they yeah. teach is, is a gift, you mm-hmm. know, um, whether it's, you know, teaching, I had the great honor of teaching for summer solstice, um, a few years ago in times square and teaching to, you know, a thousand people in the middle of times square, oh which are the busiest <laughs> part of New York. It was, and then how do you make it? Oh my God, that's gonna be crazy. Just so electrifying and elevating. Um, I just felt so inspired by it and seeing people from all different (laughs) backgrounds and walks of life and just coming together and breathing and moving and and being in their bodies. um, That was really inspiring. In the Um, middle of chaos, right? (laughs) And finding peace in the chaos. It's, it was a really magical moment. Um, I think that's something that definitely stays with me. Is there, um, anyone in your life, in your family that, um, inspires you to, you know, keep with what you're doing, knowing that you're in the source, knowing that your, your path has always been right, or is it more kind of the talk within? Um, well, I'm lucky that my husband is, um, has devoted his life to yoga and meditation as well. And he's been, it's always good to have a support. Yeah. Very influential for me in yeah. Making this sort of a way of life. Um, a way of life. I definitely stay on the path certainly because I, I feel that this is my dharma. I feel like it's my life's calling and I'm meant to share and do this because I feel so complete when I do. Um, And it's also how I stay present for my daughter and, you know, model for her what it means to be in I don't, and I don't like the word balance because I'm not always in a state of balance and life isn't always balanced, but to have coping mechanisms to be able to handle what comes your way. Um, and also just to be doing something that I'm passionate about. Yeah. You know? um, I think it's so important for our children, uh, especially little girls, to show them that, you know, you can feel, you can have a career that you love and also love being a mom at the same time. I I love that. You know, um, I was saying to you, I'm I'm being a new mom, I, you know, wanting to be a role model for your child. You know, I call you integrative mama also resonating in the things that are important to you and obviously teaching this way, but also just being uh, as a wonderful, good person, you know, and, and bringing the right morals and love to them and the connection it's so important. Um, yeah, so I just, I like love having you on the show. I, is there, um, something that you'd like to share with, um, the, you know, people that are listening or in the audience? Um, there's so much more that I know you could t- to discuss with us. So you, you have, you know, you let me know. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think the most important thing that, you know, has been, I guess, a lesson for me. And I think that just keeps coming through is compassion. Um, That like to practice this art of compassion for ourselves, um, because our inability to feel, to hold space for other people or to um, let others be in their process. Cause we're all so much in a process, certainly in the last year, it's been, um, massively, uh, transformative on many levels and a struggle and a challenge and to just have compassion for our needs that sometimes we need to be frustrated and sometimes we need to feel tired and sometimes we need to feel like we need space 
and to give ourselves like, okay, like a, that's what a, you know, a nurturing mother would do. It's like, yeah, I see that you're feeling that way. I see that you're going through this, but for us to hold that space for ourselves, to hold that space, to be able to move through the whole range of feelings and emotions and sensations that are the spectrum and fabric of life. And I really feel that when we can hold that vibration, you know, like really stand in that space that we are authentically feeling and not make it wrong doesn't mean we need to act on anger and, you know, rage out, but it's just like watch the sensations rise and fall, like really feel that then I think we'll see ourselves being able to hold that for other people. Not we have to hold it for them, but to like see other people authentically as they are and still meet at the heart, you know, and not be in judgment. It's, it's a really, it's like a simple thing, but it's so powerful. And it's been really a process for me in my life of being the, wife I want to be, being the mom I want to be, being the business partner I want to be, and the teacher I want to be, it really just all comes back to my own relationship to myself. And, and that inner conversation that you spoke of and the inner voice and that kind of inner breath kind of sitting. Yeah. And I, I appreciate you saying in the sense of we're okay to have these feelings and no, it's, you don't have to be this way or that, or recognizing that, um, yeah. you know, I, I, I call it guilt sometimes for me, the guilt of trying to put it together, trying to do this or that and, and be a mom and work. And then also say, yes, I am trying to, you know, figure this out. I, in moments for me, I usually say, I'm like, I'm not perfect by any means. And, and I always keep telling people it's okay. Um, but I like, I, I love the fact of where you've come from and said it's, you know, inner voice conversation and then mm-hmm. growing from that. So that's, yeah. really, that's really deep. I, I'm going to have to sit with this because I'm yeah. taking in your conversation right there. So, um, yeah. I, and, I appreciate just, it. And, and holding that space with radical to take Lady Gaga's. <laughs> <laughs> She's awesome, by the way. <laughs> All compassion, like radical self-acceptance. And it has to be right. Ra- it's true. It has to be radical. Um, like meaning like you fly off the rocket and, and you're like, I'm, I'm still worthy. You know, I still deserve love my own love my own affection um that really i think is the power that's going to create a shift collectively that we're all looking for right and i i mean i felt like for me when i was trying to learn some of this and still very much so learning Mm -hmm. i thought there was a selfishness because i guess me being a mom knew knew for me i was like i can't go and do yoga today i can't breathe because i need to go make sure he's okay that was a new thing on my growth um and i'm still work in progress as i tell everyone (laughs) yes we all are you know Um, yeah you're you're such a, um, a, your dharma and, and the way in which you speak, it's so appreciative. And I know that a, there's a lot of people that um, need to hear more of you and need to get in touch with you um, and connect with you in the studio online. And also I know that you'll have the studio soon, you were saying. So yeah. um, how can the audience get a hold of you? Um, I'll have all the show notes and ways additional, but how can, is there something coming up recent that you want to talk about or, um, anything in particular that you'd like to? Yeah. I mean, there's always trainings that are happening at Ishta yoga. We have a meditation, meditation training coming up in June, um, and a teacher training coming up in July and another one in September. So people can find me either on the Ishta yoga website or on my own personal website, sarahplatfinger.com. And I'm pretty 
active on social media on Instagram. Um, my Instagram is splat finger. So, Oh, wonderful. Okay. Awesome. I, I'm going to have it all in the show notes too. So I just wanted to know if there was anything additional that you might want to let the listeners know. And then as we, um, end the show today, is there just one small mindful way that you want to, um, send to the listeners before you go? Um, I think just feel your body, you know, be in your body. So we get so caught up in our mind and our thoughts, but just take moments to feel your body and whatever that looks like, whether that's a yoga pose or a deep breath or just standing on your feet, but just feel your body, be in your body. Yeah. And you're in the moment. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Sarah, you're amazing. A woman and I look forward to you being on at some other time again if you know if the opportunity arises and I um, look forward to um, getting to see you on for at the studio in person and online so thank you so much for uh, coming on thank you so much for having me it really was a pleasure I appreciate I, it thanks really, for all you do oh I'm I'm hoping you know each and every day people will find a mindful way and 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 uh, integrate the health that we should have, you know, um, in a mind, body, you know, health approach, mind, body, spirit approach. So I just wanted to say, um, thank you so much. Um, and it's beautiful. My pleasure. Take good care. You too. Bye. (laughs)